Hi, and welcome back to my channel, Learning Biology with Dr. Vanessa. In today's video, we are going to take a look at an introduction to the immune system. Now the immune system itself is quite complex and involves a bunch of different cells as well as organs that play a role in immunity. In this video, I'm going to take a look at an overview of the immune system, introduce you to some key players and organs, as well as two different types of immunity. In future videos, I will delve in deeper to specific topics because again, the immune system is quite complex. As I make this video, I already have two um, specialized videos out, one on the relationship between antigens and antibodies, and another one on B cells. And so you can check out those two videos for more specifics. This one is going to be an overview to introduce you to the idea of the immune system, what it is, two types of immunity, and then the key players that are involved in the immune system. What is the immune system? The immune system is a defense system that the body has in place in order to protect itself against pathogens that may enter into it. In order for it to function properly, the immune system must then be able to detect a whole range of pathogens. Another important aspect of the immune system is that it must be able to determine the difference between self-proteins and non-self-proteins. The immune system as a whole depends on the body's ability to be able to distinguish between these self and non-self molecules or proteins. Self molecules would be the components of the organism's body, and these would be then be able to be distinguished from foreign substances by the immune system. Now, the way that the body does this is quite complicated. For right now, I will let you know that all body cells, well, almost all body cells, have these surface proteins that are referred to as major histocompatibility complexes, or MHCs. These are proteins that hold other proteins, and this is one way that the cells can communicate with um, the immune cells and allow the body to recognize these cells as self. This is a very complicated idea and I talk about it some in the B cell video and I will be making another video just devoted to the MHCs because that can be quite complicated. For right now, understand that there are ways in place in the body that the body can recognize self proteins as self and then anything that would be non-self would be foreign to the body and the body would then have ways in play to attack those things, okay? So in order for your immune system to be working correctly the way we want it to work, it's going to recognize self proteins, our self proteins, leave those alone, recognize things like pathogens that come into the body are foreign, they are not self, and then they're going to attack those in other ways. Let's take a quick look at the two types of immunity that are found within the body. Immunity can be divided into two different types, and that would be the innate immune system and the adaptive immune system. The innate immune system is the inborn immune system. This immune system is present from birth and it requires no programming. This immune system has no specific recognition of pathogens. So the immunity here is nonspecific. There's a first line of defense with the innate immune system, and this includes things such as your skin and mucous membranes. There are also cells that are involved in this immune system, such as natural killer cells or phagocytes, which eat other things. Now, none of these immune cells are specific. Um, they are very nonspecific. And later on, I'll make another video uh, with the differences between the innate and adaptive immune system so that you can understand them a little better. For now, understand that the innate immune system is the system that you're born with, a very nonspecific system. It's basically going to be your first line of defense that comes in um, into play when something foreign comes into the body. 
The adaptive immune system, on the other hand, is acquired or programmed immunity. This immune response is specific and it is aimed at a particular non-self antigen. This immune system is much more complicated because of its specificity. In this part of the immune system, you'll hear about cells such as T cells or B cells where there is a specific interaction between the cell and the antigen and then things happen such as memory. So there will be memory cells created. In this immune system is where we have things such as antibodies that are made and also memory cells. If you take a look at my B cell video, you'll see an example of how that adaptive immune system works in regards to B cells. So again, as a quick overview, the innate immune system is the system that you're born with it includes a non-specific immunity and includes things such as the skin and mucous membranes as the first line of defense, and then cells such as natural killer cells, phagocytes, which neutrophils and macrophages are the two major types of phagocytes that we'll see. It also includes inflammation, fever, and antimicrobial proteins. The adaptive immune system includes things such as lymphocytes, which are T cells and B cells, these cells have to learn and mature and have the ability to create memory cells. Uh, B cells lead to the production of antibodies and then we can talk about the interaction between antigens and antibodies. So again, I have a B cell video for further information as well as an antigen antibody video. In the adaptive immunity, specifically with these T cells and B cells, we can have antibody mediated immunity, which again is with the B cells, and also cell mediated immunity, which happens with those T cells. Because adaptive immunity is specific, it takes a little bit longer for it to go into play than the innate immunity. And so with adaptive immunity, we see that there's a first response, that initial response that takes a bit of time, and then afterwards, if you come into contact with the antigen again, the second response is much quicker. Again, this is just an overview of these two different um, immune systems. In a later video, I'll talk about the difference between the innate immunity and adaptive immunity in much more detail. The final portion of the overview of the immune system that we can look at is referred to as a lymphatic system. Now the lymphatic system is actually a human organ system that is a very important part of the immune system. It is also part of the cardiovascular system. And the lymphatic system works in a way that it drains interstitial fluid and basically brings it back towards the heart. So it's very similar to the vein system in that it um, travels um, up to the heart and it is a one-way system. So rather than the circulatory system that's a two-way closed system, the lymphatic system just brings um, extra fluid from the tissues and then back to the heart. As it does so, it passes things called lymph nodes. And in the lymph nodes, we have a variety of different cells that have the capability of seeing what might be in that fluid um, and having a reaction against it. So that if there is an antigen, a pathogen in that fluid, then there is a reaction that is going to take place right there in the lymph nodes. Other than the lymph nodes, other important organs that are involved in immunity are the thymus, the spleen, and lymphatic follicles. These organs can be divided into primary lymphatic organs. These are the sites where stem cells divide and develop into B cells and T cells that are mature or immunocompetent. The primary lymphatic organs include the thymus and the red bone marrow. It's also divided into the secondary lymphatic organs and tissues and these are sites where most of the immune responses occur. These include the lymph nodes, the spleen, and the lymphatic follicles. The lymphatic system then, in conjunction with the adaptive immune system, can then give rise to a very acquired, specific type of immunity with all these players in play. Now, 
Again, these are very complicated topics, and so I will make another video that delves into these different organs and tissues much more specifically so that you can get an idea of how they specifically work and interact together. For now, I hope that this video gave you a good overall understanding of the immune system, the different parts of the immune system, and how the lymphatic system is also a very integral part of the immune system itself. Thank you so much for watching my video. I appreciate your support. I hope that this video helps you to better understand an overview of the immune system. Again, I'll be getting into more specific videos later on. If you have any questions or comments, please make sure to leave them in the comments below. And as always, please subscribe and click on uh, the notifications so that you never miss out on a new video. Thank you.